I'm determined to make this pirate ship. In the last video, I cut out the ribs and the kill. I didn't glue them together yet, but in this video, we are going to glue them all and also make the floors. As I said before, I'm going to make this ship such that I can take it apart and replace it with different parts if I want to. So the ribs will be glued, but not the floors. The floors need to come off so that the cameras can get in. So the first thing I did was to make the grooves at the bottom of these pieces so it can interlock with the kill. And then I hollowed out the middle. I left little grooves for the floors to stand on. There are two floors underneath the main deck, which will be covered by the hall. So anyway, if that sounds all confusing, let's just say I'm gluing the ribs to the kill and making three floors today. There are 12 ribs, two additional pieces to support the area before the forecastle. I need a few more pieces to hold up the captain's cabin, but we will work on those in the next video. So this is how those ribs look like. It's a little uneven, some parts a little higher, some shorter. Some shifted too much left, some shifted too much right. So to fix that, I sanded down any areas that were sticking out too much. I will come back and smooth out everything later, but it's not that important right now. We kind of have to get the base structure done first. I also sanded down the inside too, try to even out the height. Maybe I will do a more thorough job when I come back for the interior. And then I cut out a little wooden blocks which are attached to the kill on both sides so the ship can stand straight on its own without the paper clips. Okay, now comes the floors. We need to make three floors today. I had a blueprint in the last video, but it kind of became useless because those ribs are not exactly glued, like in theory. So I decided to make the floors with a bit of a trial and error. Basically, I cut out a shape that looks decently close to what I need, then just Cut, cut, cut until it looks right. I thought the hard part was really hard, but it turns out it wasn't. It's hard when it's in a rectangular form, not when it is shaped like these. It's just wood powder glued together all kind of bends from the weight of the ribs. I didn't film this, but I did put on extra glue coating on the kill, but I'm scared one day it will just snap into two. I read that these big ships were very hard to make, even in ancient times, because the kill will snap into two, even with just a little bit of force. Not until they invented cross beams were they able to build these big ships. These galleons and first class man of war? E yeah. Uh oh. My kill is not a cross beam. It's just, um, a beam. If it's already starting to bend, I don't know if it will stand after I put on way more stuffs on top. Once the blueprint is made, I transferred it to the cardboard. I'm going to attach the wood to these cardboards later, but the cardboard version will become the base for these floors.
because this is the lowest part of the ship and also the cargo deck. Alright, moving on to the second floor. This is the crew deck and also where the cannons will be located. I started with the blueprint from the previous floor but made it a little wider. Did you know that these cannons could weigh up to 3400 pounds or, or 1500 kilograms? That's heavy! And they carried around many many of these cannons. I still don't know how I'm going to make those tiny cannons yet, but I'm thinking about it. Which brought me to how much can these ships carry? And they can carry anywhere from 600 to 2000 tons, so that's kind of impressive. I'm thinking maybe like two dozen cannons, about a dozen on each side. I think that will look cool. I'm thinking at this point maybe this ship is too small. Maybe I should have made it a little bigger, but I still don't know. If I include the mast, maybe this is the perfect size. I'm realizing how small everything else needs to become. The crew deck, or I think they call it the berth. They used to hang hammocks in between cannons. The infirmary would be located here on this floor. In some pictures, the capstan is located on both this floor and the main deck. I don't know if that's true, whether they actually had two capstans, or this is just suggesting either or. I don't know, I need to do some more research why capstans appear in both floors in some pictures. Maybe the capstan on the main deck is used to raise or lower the anchor, but then what's the use for the one located below? What's that supposed to lift? The more I look into this, it amazes me just how complicated these sail ships are. Historians think the first sail ship was invented around 5500 BCE. That's a long time ago. It amazes me even more how our ancestors figured out how to use wind energy so early and yet we didn't expand the use of wind energy as much. Since then, the next invention, the windmill, didn't appear until 500 to 900 AD. That's nearly 5,000 years of difference. And since then, more than a thousand years later, we still are not using the wind energy as much. It makes me wonder, why was wind energy so mind-boggling for us humanity? It's more universal than water or fire. It makes me wonder, if someone invented more wind technologies in the past, would our civilization look completely different now? Like, I don't know, using the same concept as windmill, maybe wind weaver, wind spinning wheel, or wind mail delivery system using like kite, or maybe someone tried them all and they thought they didn't work. But just a food for thought. If our ancient kingdoms invented technologies that used wind energy more, I wonder what those inventions might have looked like. So here is the third floor. This is the main deck. This deck is open roof. I'm making this one based off of the floor below, but I'm making this one a little narrower. Maybe, you know, in like really windy areas. Maybe like a dozen or so wind blades are installed on top of the mountain and they basically operate this like a conveyor belt or like a cable car kind of device and they can transport goods or people to the top of the mountain. But then maybe huh, getting yourself horses or llamas or donkeys worked better than that elaborate system. 
I guess imagining things is easy, probably not so easy in reality. But I hope we think about more and more of how to harness the wind energy as we go forward. It's so universally available. It doesn't come when you want it to, but it's free. The Mother Nature guaranteed us this energy source universally to everyone. We should take advantage of it more. I heard wind turbines are getting cheaper and they are getting quieter too. I also heard some countries are completely or pretty close to switching over completely to wind and other renewable energy sources for their electricity generation. So it's definitely possible. It's coming. I wonder what those days would look like. Here, I'm transferring the pattern over to the cardboard. So now the third floor from the kill or the main floor is now made with a cardboard. These ships only lasted 10 years, maybe 20 if well taken care of. Someone estimates that these ships costed about $5 million in today's dollars. So, if you think about it, these ships are expensive. It seriously needs to find some really, really lucrative stuff to transport. Like, fill all 3,000 tons of capacity with like all gold or something. I don't know if you can pay off 5 million dollar ships in 10 years if you transport to just ship stuffs. With all three floors drawn up and cut out using cardboard, the next step is to make the floors wooden. So I glue together these craft sticks and then glue them onto the cardboard. I'm going to come back and maybe stain these floors later, but for now, let's just make them look wooden. I didn't glue everywhere because I'm scared the glue might warp the wood, so basically only the sides are glued. They seem to hold just fine. And then I sand it down a little bit to get rid of glue marks and just make the floor look a little smoother. one of these galleons. Two years to build something that will only last 10 years. That's an expensive endeavor. No one would do this unless they really, really thought it was worth all that effort. I guess that's how important these sail ships were to these people. But at least they didn't have to buy fuel every time they sailed out. At least that's one good part. They had to carry around lots of fresh water. A good portion of their hull capacity had to be filled with drinking water. I guess it really wasn't easy. Of course, you had to carry food too. Enough food to last the entire voyage. Okay, the first floor is finally done. It's covered in wood. It looks pretty good. Better than my expectation. It fits quite well, so I don't have to glue it to the ship. I think it'll hold. In the future, if we have to make another ship, I'm going to make another floor and then swap it out with this one so it looks like I have another ship but actually I'm just swapping out the floors so this one looks good now two more floors to go this thought didn't even cross my mind until now but does wood stain go on top of dried glue I don't know. I want the wood texture to remain so it looks like it's made with wood. 
but does wood stain go on top of the glue? Or am I going to have these spotty glue spots? Hmm, so many unknowns. I'm using wood glue, so hopefully that's good enough. And wood stain will just hopefully seep in, but I guess I should go and get myself some wood stain sooner than later. Or maybe acrylic paint will work? I don't want to add water though. As soon as I mix water, this wooden floor will start to warp. It happened before. I know how weak these craft sticks are and how prone they are to warping. Maybe if I can mix some clear medium with acrylic paint, maybe it'll look like wood stain. I know acrylic paint doesn't care if it's painted above wood or dried glue. I guess another thing to test. Someone mentioned I should add some light. Yes, that's a good idea. I know I bought some mini light a long time ago for some other project, but I can't seem to find them. I think I have some idea where they might be, but I will have to dig through boxes and boxes of stuff. So that's another one on my to-do list. I found an LED strip though, but those probably will look too weird. They will make this ship looking like a disco hall. Or maybe that is a good idea. <gasps> hmm. Anyway, I need to go search for those lights when I have energy to go through all my boxes. One unique feature about the second floor is that this one folds. I intentionally did not glue the middle. I can't insert the second floor unless I can fold it. The second floor is wider than the main deck. I originally thought I had to do some really elaborate things to make it fold, but just the cardboard backing seems to work fine. I originally thought I had to go get myself a small latch and I was freaking out. Where would I go to find a latch that's small enough for this? But it turns out I didn't need one. This floor is also holding quite well. I don't think I have to do anything else to make it stay here. I came across a poem a few days ago, Landscape with the Fall of Icarus by William Carlos Williams. Some poems just resonate with you differently depending on when in your life you read it. The first time when I read this poem, I thought it was funny. But a few years later, I went back and read it again. It was the saddest, most tragic poem I've ever read. He really drowned, didn't he? He just wanted to leave that island, even if it meant strapping himself to wings that didn't work. So. I wanted to go back and read that poem again. What did I feel this time? So I did. This time, I felt like I'm that farmer. Not Icarus. Flying the field and didn't even notice Icarus. Oh, there goes another person trying to do some weird thing again. Am I supposed to be bothered by this? What a crazy world I'm living in. Was it always this crazy? Or maybe this year is just extra crazy? I feel like there is not only one Icarus, but many, many Icarus all donning these wingsuits and I'm like wondering, was it there before? Were they all there before? Why are they all doing this? Why now? If Icarus ever asks me, why didn't I notice him? What did I tell him? I got my own fields to plow. You know, the whole pageantry. I heard this ear is awake tingling near. I could have told you the wings will melt, but you probably knew it. I could have told you not to go, but you would have tried it anyway. If you ask me how to fix the wings, I would probably tell you I don't know. If 
I knew how to make those wings myself, I wouldn't be plying the fields now, would I? So anyway, with that random thought, here is where we are. Do you see a ship yet? Maybe not, but we have two lower decks and the main deck. A little uneven areas here and there, but we can come back and fix those later. I think we're doing good. In the next video, we will build two upper floors. Thanks for watching.